morning, everybody. If you're alive and you're hearing me, uh, can you just pull up your hand and say, I'm hearing you, uh, so we can get started. If you're hearing me, can you just tap in and say, I'm hearing you, so I can know, and then we can get started. If you are hearing me, can you can you please let me know? Hello, are you hearing me? All right, come on, everybody. Uh, some of you see you're hearing me. I want to, I want to welcome each one of you uh, to our class section uh, this morning. Uh, we've been talking about a couple of things in the uh, in my. Uh, we've been talking about uh, bad leaders uh, and deeper mercy. Uh, if anyone remember anything we said, excuse me, uh, last week from our class, if you can tap it into the platform as a reminder, uh, that would be wonderful. If anyone can also do us a favor, if you have any question that you are unable to ask last week and you think you want you remember the question during the time of the week. Uh, you are free to ask your question, step your question in right now, and we'll be able to answer. Uh, just a reflection on bad uh, leaders. Uh, in diplomacy, we have spoken to us extensively uh, what our character holds. But how can I talk about bad and good actors or leaders in diplomacy when if if I cannot oh sorry I trying to adjust myself here if I cannot do certain things this uh, this morning uh, first of all I would thank each one of you from the different countries of the world who have uh, gathered yourselves around to listen to us as we go about discussing things that are important uh, to your to your career uh, your uh, diplomatic uh, field uh, and and the interest and your interest in diplomacy well if I want to talk about bad and good leaders today why can I not first of all begin to think again our new leadership in Nigeria Ambassador Lucy is doing extremely well along her, her team, uh, not forgetting uh, Ambassador Abigail Lawrence. These women are working tremendously hard uh, to get Nigeria back on track again, uh, extremely hard. And I, I sit every day uh, and watch them reorganizing uh, Nigeria as a whole, uh, bringing in new competent coordinators, uh, trying to set a stage for uh, for Nigeria to make a difference again. Uh, so I want to thank the leadership. We're talking about good and bad leadership, and it's important, you know, for us to recognize uh, uh, the leadership again in Nigeria. Our current leadership to do extremely extremely well. 
uh, for for doing that. Uh, now, when we talk about bad leaders, uh, when people talk about bad leaders in in diplomacy, with uh, people are talking about uh, three important things: character, competence, and consequence. Uh, so yeah, man. When people when we talk about bad leaders or good leaders in deeper mass, we're talking about character, competence, and consequence. Uh, so if you, if you there, you know the three key. I just gave us the three key uh, uh, things when we're talking about. Uh, Good or bad leaders. We talk about again. Listen to that. I want someone to tap it in for us. Three three characteristics that refer to as a person as a bad leader or a good leader would be your character, your competence, and the and the the consequence. All right. Let's talk about character. Uh, in diplomacy, our character. Our characters are very much important. Our character our, our character is so much important in diplomacy. You see, our character is not always just what we say. Our character in diplomacy is what we do. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. A character, competence, and consequence. That's right. These are the three key, three key factors that we need to understand when we talk about bad or good diplomacy. You know, our character is 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 one for. If you're listening to me, can someone tap in here? Uh, the definition of, of character, what a character is. But I will, I will sum up to say I will, your character is you. You are your character. Uh, so ambassadors need to understand that we need to exhibit excellent or uh, good characters at all times. Let's begin with where you work. As a diplomat, let's begin with your community. How are people considering you when it comes to your character? Are they considering you as a good man, a good woman, good ambassador? Is it because of you other people want to join the future diplomats? Is it because of you other people trying to lead the future diplomats? I don't want to go back in most of our history, but I can tell you the truth. Some of the people who led our organization, especially the ex, especially the former leadership, one of one person in our former leadership in Nigeria who led us, his face was a negative approach to the organization. Uh, many people left the future diplomats because they came and they saw this person leading the future diplomat. This person had a bad character that other people knew about. And so instead of people being encouraged to join the future diplomats, people were leaving the future diplomats when they saw this identical face leading our group. Character, my friend, is so much important. And our character becomes our ethics. You see, I, I told you before that uh, some of you, uh, I told you before that uh, in this book, I talk about ethics, the form of values, right? Ethics, the form of values. Uh, We live in a world that is trying to lose its ethical system. 
many people are not caring or being mindful about their own ethics that is being exhibited. So it is important for us to develop ex and give ourselves the character that need. Character is character is nothing more than than our ethics, right? Um, in this book, I very I talk about the diff the difficult the difficulty that different ethics are facing. I talk about uh, the nature. Of ethics, uh, I think about how ethics is important and how, it's, how it all started, and it is important. Uh, and in this book, I talk about the ethics of the Christians, the ethics of the Buddhist, the et the ethics of the Muslims, and uh, so that we can understand the different ethical system that we have around the world. I also talk about the ethics of religious leaders, political leaders, and 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 majority of the actors that we have today around the world. So yeah, my friend, if you hear people try to talk about bad or good leaders, or the people are only referring to our character our competence, and the consequences that come alongside with our character and our competence. So character is important, very much important for those of us who want to become a diplomat. Uh, continue to read your book, and it's important, right? Um, so, So when we when when we when we think about why people try to labor leader as bad, uh, we come up with three ways. Like I said, right? Three ways. Um, the first, most obvious sense in which people talk about bad leaders. I said, I want you to listen to this. I said it's in terms of the moral content. The moral content of the character. So if you hear people talking about good leaders, good ambassadors, they are referring to our moral content, M-O-R-A-L, our moral content of our character. Uh, you see, leaders can be regarded as morally bad in terms of what they want and how they are prepared to get what they want. Let me say this again. Leaders can be regarded as morally bad in terms of both what they want and how to prepare to get what they want. I don't want to keep going back on our on, on our examples, our own example in our organization, but let's look at other organizations. Leaders, people in leadership, are trying to get from other people, scam other people to get from them. So what, what do they do? They develop stories. They develop unwanted projects. Uh, they develop things that have no rationale meaning to being genuine. And they use it to scam other people of the money. Uh, and so we need to be mindful of what we do and how we do what we do. You see, uh, when we talk about bad leaders, we talk about leaders, people who lie, people who cheat, people who steal, people who bully, and people who hurt other people. I'm going to say this again. 
when we talk about bad leaders in our diplomatic field, we are talking, we, we are talking about uh, bad people. And what are some of the characteristics of bad people? They lie, they cheat, they steal, they bully, and they hurt. And if you are a bully, if you hurt other people, you are stealing from other people, you are cheating from other people, you become a bad leader. And if I, I can give another example, we had, uh, I had somebody, uh, just yesterday, inbox me, and the person told me that he was a little shy. Uh, he's going to school, and he does not have food to eat. He has not eaten for many, many days. So my first concern was, if a little child, I tested him back in Boston, if you're a little child going to school, what are you doing on the internet? If you're a little child, as you claim, and you're going to school, what are you doing on the internet trying to text people who live in millions of miles away from you, who you don't even know, to get some money. But surely, surely enough, maybe this person forgot to understand that if anybody send me a message, I first of all have to do my start researching you, you know, and, and looking you up uh, before I, I, I establish a communication link with you. Well, bottom line is, this person who was shouting has come on one of our platforms, not a member of the organization, but just came as on our platform because somebody sent him the link. And now he got our members' uh, info link. I mean, he, he on the same chat with, with, with members, and so he can inbox anybody. And yeah, he inboxed me, and when I went back to check this number, it's on our it's on our platform. It's on our platform, and he tries to tell me that he's a little boy, and, and he can prove it. In fact, he can call me, you know, on the video. Can't you can't you know that this person got a little boy to make a telephone call on video? To me, first of all, he's not just lying, he's not just cheating, he just he's he's hurting this little child, he's bullying this little child whose picture he's using on the internet to make video calls and claiming he is the one. It's a big form of bullying, spoiling this child's future. Yet he claimed himself to be a diplomat. As someone who wants to be a leader or a diplomat on our platform. You, you, you cannot do that. So, so we, we, we need to understand when we hear people talking about leadership and we th in, 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 in our perfection and we think about bad characters or bad leaders, you're talking about people who just cheat. People who don't do wrong. Right? Now, the some, our, our former president, Donald Trump, was a good man. The others, he was a bad. So those who say he was a bad, they look into his character. What did he do? Oh yes, he tried to bully some people who work in his government. He was a big form of bully. In some way, some fashion, according to the people who he bullied. Right? Uh, according to some people, he cheated the system. He cheated them on paying taxes. 
So to the world, he seemed to be good. But to the American people, or some of the American people, he seemed to be bad. He cheated the system. He never paid taxes for so, so many years. According to other people who consider him to be bad, he cheated, he lied. In fact, he lied that he won this gone election. When people said, no, Mr. President, you did not win the election, Donald Trump claimed that he won the election. He announced it, and he still announces it today, that he won the election, the presidential election. Well, he was on, he was, he was booked on recalling when he was asking uh, people in Georgia to give him votes, to find votes for him. Now, today, the former president of the United States of America has been, has been criminally charged has been criminally charged. He was indicted. He went to court just a day ago, just yesterday. He pleaded not guilty. He paid 200,000 through a bond company to stand his bond before he could get released from prison. The United States president, former president of the United States of America. All right? And He's, having, he's going to be having a time in court. Hear me, folks. That's what the United States of America stands for. That nobody is above the law. If you think you can cheat, if you think you can lie, if you think you can bullet other people, you will be brought to book. If the United States of America can do that to her former president, and if he's found guilty, he's going to go to jail. No country in the world have done, and no country will ever do. But that's who we are in the United States of America. We stand for justice. That's why when some of you come on our platform and try to do likewise, we bring you to book. We either expose you or we ask you to leave our platform. Diplomatic is used, is losing its ethical standpoint. Ethical standpoint. People today are just big bully. They're just lying, finding a way to steal and rob other people from the resources and the things that they have. That's bad leadership. So if you come on the Future Diplomats platform and you want to exhibit those type of behaviors, friend, you are wasting your time. You'll be exposed. You'll be asked to leave. So those are the things we're referring to in bad leadership, our character. Again, if the former president of the United States of America can be booked and brought to court and go to uh, to check himself in, you know, and and plead not guilty, and 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 and, and, the, and people have to come and stay a bond to the bond company to leave the prison. That's how serious and great America is. And they are taking the stand on people who just bullied him. And that's who the future diploma is. That's why you see our flag. It's a land, land side of the United States of America flag. We want to get the bullets of the world. We want to make a world a free and a better place. So if you think that being a member of the future diplomats is to bullet, steal, lie to people, you need to stop. 
right? So if you stop people talking about that, that's what they're talking about. Our bad, our bad examples. The next thing in in be any question? Do we have any questions so far? If you are hearing me, can you please tap? I'm hearing you. Or put up, just put up your hand, your electronic hand, so I can know. Uh, because I've I, I've been talking for 25 minutes now, and I hope that someone is hearing me. Come on, folks, we need to be interactive here. So if you're hearing me, just just step. I'm hearing you. All right, I'm still waiting. Okay, thank you. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for hearing. Comfort, Ambassador Comfort is sharing. Ambassador Abigail Lawrence is sharing. That's wonderful. All right, so we've been talking about these type of characters in, in, in our diplomatic field. Bad, 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 bad people. Uh, but you see, what is what distinguish bad leaders from ordinary people they have the opportunity because of the position. You see, but they're not different. The only thing that they have different is the opportunity because of the position. You see, someone who's in position, sometimes trying to use the leadership role uh, to, do, to do some bad to those who are under them. And the thing, because they are the leader, they can do that, and the people, will, the people will be afraid, you know, to respond, the people will be afraid to say some things. And so they become bad. Uh, let's give you some general example. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler was the, uh, Nisi leader of Germany, right? Uh, and you know what, what, what Hitler did? Hitler booted people, he lied to people, he cheated, he destroyed people's lives, he hurt families, he killed millions of people using the opportunity that he had as a leader. He was a bad leader. How about Joseph? Stalin. Joseph Stalin was a, a communist leader uh, of the of the uh, Soviet Union. These two leaders, Joseph Stanley and Adolf Hitler, they were examples of bad leaders. Right? So, uh, millions of people today gain political position. They serve in offices for their personal interest. Now, if you serve for your personal interest and not at the, for the interest of the people you serve, you are also re recognized as a bad leader. Your leadership is not for you. Remember, I talked to some of us, and I thought about this uh, leadership book. In this book, I told us that I gave some, I gave some important nuggets about leaders. Uh, I, I, I did speak to us, and I told us how leaders work with pe leaders are people, first of all. Now, now take, these three, take these three things into consideration. As a diplomat, take these three things into consideration. A leader or leaders are people and they work with people. Leaders are people and they work with people. 
So, so if we understand that leadership, be it in a diplomatic world, or whatever form that you may be part of, whatever world you live in, leaders are just people who work with people. They are people. All right? And, 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 and that's why in the political arena or the diplomatic arena, we talked about international relations. Relations is a word that is related to people. International simply means you are working with people from different cultures or different parts of the world. Formulating a force to make a difference. So the international is just somebody or people working with different people from around the world, formulating a force in making the difference. And here I mean sometimes the difference can be positive and can be negative. And that's why we always try to make the difference that is positive. Right? So don't fuck about that. In, this, in, in our leadership compacts, here, I talk about leaders are people, leaders appreciate people, you know, in leadership, once we are people, then we must grow. Now, one of the secret in helping a good leader to grow is that leader is helping other people to grow. Again, one of the best secrets in your ambassadorial leadership role for your growth is for you to help other people to grow. I'll give an example. I'm teaching this class right now. And for me to be effective and efficient in teaching you to grow in your leadership ability, as an expert diplomatic personnel, I must grow myself. I must study it. I learn different principles and policies. I'm learning how, dip, how uh, diplomats should operate themselves or carry themselves around the world. I am learning, growing myself. You see, for a leader, to be effective and efficient, he must be able to grow himself. Now, leadership with our leadership with our growth is leadership of death. If you want to take notes of this, leadership with our growth is leadership of death. If a leader is not growing, that leader is dying. So that's where we come from from the worst next word from character to competence. So the people just don't take into consideration because I'm an ambassador, they take in consideration, am I competent enough to become an ambassador? Your competency is important. Your competency as an ambassador helps you to guide and lead other people while you try to make a difference. Your competency is your capability to do what you can do. Be a force on your own, resilient, Yet, be able to work with other people. What is your competency, my friend, of becoming an ambassador? What can I do? What can I, what can I contribute to the world? What can I contribute to the society? So your competency is important. Look at look at some of our platform today. You can see that people are not competent to become an ambassador. Are not competent, right? 
They have misled some people, have cheated some people, and they come on our platform want to do the same. And those who came on our platform and those who still come on our platform trying to do the same, they have been booked. They have been brought to justice. And in fact, good that one of them who took money from people right now is paying back the money that he took from them. It's unethical. Our competency is important. Our competency is important. Are you, are you competent to lead your people? Do you have a problem that you have never taught to solve as an ambassador and you're looking for someone to solve those problems for you? You are incompetent to lead your people. If you are not solving problems and the problems are weighing you down, you are incompetent. What is your leadership skills and abilities? What can you do? And how can you do what you do? They are equally important. You see, competence will take you beyond your dream. Competent will bring you in reality. Those are you who are taking notes. Competent will take you beyond your dreams. Competency will bring you in your reality. I am competent enough to do this. So we need to understand that our leadership role as ambassadors involves a lot of things. But competency is important. Competency is important. Uh, your competence is your ability to bring about what you and your people actually want. Uh, ambassadors, listen to this. Your competency in your ambassador role is for you to be able to bring into reality what you and your people really want. You can have good dreams and good visions written down on paper. If you don't have the competent or if you're not competent enough to bring it to pass, you are making a big mistake. Don't just have big dreams like the future diplomats to making the world a better place. But we need competent ambassadors, people who are well-trained, people who understand diplomacy to be part of our system. We're not just putting together people who want to get credentials. We're not just putting together people who are looking for ID cards. We want people who understand the importance of making the dream to come to pass. People who have the potential to lead other people in making the world a better place. There is any potential. And so we don't just look for people to work with. We look for the potential that lies within the people. Now, you may be one of our directors and you're listening to me right now. You will be one of our coordinators and you are listening to me right now. For the future diplomats to be effective, we are looking for the potential that lies within the people. Not just the outward appearance or the physical sculpture of a man or a woman. We are looking for the ability to make a difference. So it is important that you as a diplomat needs to understand that people are looking for your character and your competency. Am I capable enough? Do I have the right training, the right education? Am I qualified? 
to sit with those people? Am I qualified to be one of the ambassadors to make a difference around the world? Your capability is important. Again, your capability in your leadership role is important. You see, people want to hear what you say, but they also want to have a guide or a roadmap or a role model in where they need to go and what they need to do. The who is important as well as the what and the where and the when. Listen to me again. The who there is O is important as well as the what there is a T and the when there is E N. Who we are, we are ambassadors. But what we do defines who we really are. Ambassadors who are not effective. They are recognized by tattoo. Ambassadors who are effective, they are recognized as diplomats who are doing what they have to do. So your capability is important. Think about this. Any question? Any, any question? No question? You see, our competency is important. And it's seen in every level of our lives. In every field. People want to know if you're a competent as the leader to follow you. Uh, people want to understand that you have the leadership ability to lead. Oh. Good leaders communicate. But communication is both ways. It's sending a message talking, waiting and getting feedback. That's why every time when I go ahead, when I'm lecturing, I stop and I ask any question or any com comment, any concern. Because good leaders will not just talk, good leaders must be able to listen. And in a diplomatic field, you do not listen to respond. You listen to learn. Again, I'm going to say this. As a good diplomat, you don't listen to respond. You listen to learn. If you can learn other people's situation, if you can learn how they are feeling, why and what they are feeling, then you will be able to solve a problem and just don't respond to a need. You see, responding to a need is different from solving problems. Let me give an example. United Nations can quickly to respond can quickly respond to a need when there is war and people are dying from starvation of all food because no food can come into the country United Nations bring in food to feed the masses those who are in need they are responding based upon that crisis but it's hard for you to see United Nations will come in 
when it's hard to see another nation coming when there is no war, but in another nation they say, well, I'm coming to bring food, to teach people how to grow their own food, to teach people how to become agricultural, agriculturalists, to providing, growing more food. No. It's hard for you to see United Nations coming in and bringing seed and just bringing food and saying, we're teaching you how to grow more food. So they quickly they respond to need instead of solving the problem. The problem of shortage of food is lack of growth of food. We got more consumption to more producer. So to solve that problem, is to be able to produce more food instead of just giving out food. So we need to understand that our role involves a lot of things, but 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 like I said, communication in two ways. Uh, we must be able to hear from other people. But one thing is that we must listen to learn and not just listen to respond. And that's why as soon as you hear something, you are ready to respond because you have to listen in the ear to respond and not a listen in the ear to learn. The most, the most productive an efficient leader is the leader who's listening to learn. Hear me, folks. We can learn from each other. We can learn. We can learn. Every leader must be able to grow. And to grow, you must learn. Your growth comes through learning. Ambassadors, your growth comes through learning. Your growth does not come through bully people lying, scamming. It comes to effective learning, learning about other, other people, other, uh, learning about other people's situation, and then trying to do what you can do to help them in making the difference. Uh, some of the things that affect our leadership competency is our intelligence our health, our emotional development, and our experience. Let me say this again. Some of the factors that are affecting a leader's competency to lead include intelligence, health, emotional development, and experience. Your intelligence as an ambassador or, or a leader has a whole lot to play on your productive action. Again, your competence or your intelligence, excuse me, your intelligence as a leader has a whole lot to play on your productive action. Your intelligence in dealing with people, your intelligence of making decisions, your intelligence of your interaction, your intelligence of your planning, your objectives, and to achieve those objectives, they are all important. That's why they call your intelligence. So you need to understand that as, as diplomats, we must be so much intelligent in our feed. And your intelligence will come by development and growth. Oh God. I hope someone hear me this. Your intelligence will come to your development and growth. Lila must learn to grow. And one of the ways you can grow is by learning from other people. Every leader who thinks that he or she cannot learn from someone else, 
that leader is gradually dying. So our leadership will be effective and efficient by growth. Leaders who don't learn to grow, they learn to die. Again, leaders who don't learn to grow, do leaders learn to die. Growth is an important key of our leadership in our diplomatic work, and it comes to our intelligence. Intelligence, intelligence is not just steam from education. There are people who are not educated, but they have intelligence. So don't do not miss intelligence with education. Intelligence should be matured in a period of time through growth of experience. If you take a note, take this one. Intelligence will come at a point in time relating to your growth or your and your and the importance of experience that you have. So one of the key things for leader is your experience. Develop an experience in the field to home or for home you want to become a diplomat. If you want to be a diplomat in the business world, are you learning how effective business work? Are you learning to be ethical, ethical in your business venture, or are you learning to, are you learning to become a scammer? Are you learning to develop a business just because you think you can cheat other people to make profit? Experience is important. An earnest experience will make a difference. I want to say this again. Importance, intelligence is important. An earnest intelligence will make the difference. Uh, good leaders think about the health. Now, what you say, what you bring in up a health in diplomacy, for a leader to be effective and efficient, that leader must be healthy. How many of us understand that an uncontrollable weight sometimes makes us to make wrong decisions? when we're under pressure. So it is important to understand that diplomats must also be people who are learning to be healthy. Health is important in anything that we do. And someone have someone we want to ask, uh, DG, why health has to do with diplomacy? That's another mistake. That's one of the mis mistakes we make. Unhealthy leaders look for ways to make other people unhealthy. Healthy leaders produce healthy, healthy leaders. Unethical leaders produce unethical followers. Leaders with good health develop leaders in good health. Our leadership is our capability 
to lead. I said before, you can never lead where you have never been. You can never take someone to a place where you have never been. People who make some quick decisions are there. But an effective leader must be a healthy leader if you don't have good health. And this is part of our our uh, work. What, what, what the word I want to use? Competency. Our competency, health, health is important. An effective ambassador is an ambassador who is healthy. I tell you, from uh, some of you don't know, I was running to become a representative in government in my country. So campaign began. I was running my campaign for months. And while I was running my campaign for months, I have to be on the field myself. I have to go and walk. I will walk hundreds of miles. I'm telling you hours we will walk from place to place, door to door, meeting people and talking with them. While we will be on our journey in this camping trail, I will have most of our leaders and some of our followers living back where me and the team, we are ahead. Because I used to make sure I would have to exercise. I have to be fit to be part of the group. So our health is important. Oh, thank you, Ambassador Lawrence. Ambassador Lawrence said true talk on health, sir. Ambassador Lawrence continued to say that it takes a healthy mind and body to be creative and productive. That's so true. It takes a healthy mind and body to be creative and productive. Thank you, Ambassador Abigail Lawrence. That's a nice contribution. So one of the things that we look for, you look for in yourself to be an effective, or uh, like Ambassador said, Ambassador Lawrence said, create, to be creative or productive, you must be healthy. If you spend all the time in looking for a way to go to the doctors, looking for a way to get yourself healthy, how will you be able to lead effectively? So let's every ambassador take in consideration health factor on the ambassadorial role that they take. Imagine, I'm not just healthy in my body, and I'm also healthy in my mind. You see, your health comes in many factors. You must be healthy in the body, the spirit, the soul, and your mind. So your health is important. Uh, yes, another ambassador, ambassador Hassan just said, a healthy mind is a creative mind. Yes, Ambassador Lawrence, uh, you know, just said that initially. But a healthy mind is a, so we need, to, we need to take in consideration, ambassadors, that one of the things that in your book that the writer talks about, he talks about health. Hyper emotional development. As an ambassador, we need to understand our emotional development is important to become an effective ambassador. Our emotional development. It, what is weighing you down on your emotions? How do you respond? When you are on an attack, let me say this. Ambassadors 
watch the steps when they are emotionally attacked because your emotion plays a great deal on your decision making. Again, your emotion is important because it plays a great deal on your decision making. So our emotional development is important. How do you respond on a pressure? How do you respond on a certain situations? How do you respond? So leaders must grow or ambassadors must grow emotionally or they must have emotional development. Ambassador Juliet, Ambassador Okoro Juliet said, health is worth. Yes, your health is your worth. But so, so your emotion, your emotional development is important, ambassadors. You know, so when people talk about unhealthy or unethical ambassadors, This also can be relating to your emotional development. How do you respond to situations? What do you do? So we need to understand that our emotional, uh, our emotional development is important. And our experience. Hear me, folks. Learn, learn, learn. Learn, learn. Your experience as a diplomat is so much important. You need to understand then this. So the first thing when people talked about about leadership, they are talking about our our competence. Our moral, inv our, our moral development, our character. Right? Uh, any question? Any concern? Any question? Any concern? Any contribution? <laughs> So remember I said the second sense when people talk about bad leadership, they are talking about the factors that affect our intelligence, our health, our emotional development, and our experience. Those of you who are taking notes, can you please tap this in on our platform? The second sense when people talk about bad leaders, they are talking about the things, they are talking about those factors that affect our competence, which include our intelligence to lead, our health to lead, our emotional development uh, to lead and making decisions, and our experience. Do we have an experience in what we say we're going to do? Do we have an experience of becoming an ambassador? Do we have an experience of doing that? Uh, ambassador Dana Job said, you have to be emotionally stable to make the right decision. That's correct. You have to be emotionally stable to make a right decision. That's correct, Ambassador David Job. Thank you for your contribution. Any more contribution? Any more? Uh, any question? Any more question? I know some of you just came online, uh, came in late. Uh, we started one hour ago, so I'm going to take another uh, 30 minutes. Uh, class will be one hour, 30 minutes today. So I, I left 30 minutes that I'm going to wrap you up right now and let you go, especially those of you who come in late. Please, next time, come, come to class on time. Please come to class on time. 
so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to conclude uh, this section in another 10 minutes. So please ask your questions right now because when I conclude, they're going to be I'm not going to be having time for questions. So please ask your question right now. But remember this. I said the second thing when the, the second sense when people talk about bar leaders, they are looking at those things uh, that affect the leader's uh, competence to lead, and those things will include your intelligence, your health, your emotional development, and your experience. Some people don't have any experience in leadership, <laughs> and they want to lead. Right, you will never be effective and efficient. Now, the third sense in which people talk about bad leaders is when they, when, when, when the people do not like what these leaders are doing, especially uh, the consequences of what they are doing uh, for the interests of the people. Right, uh, when people don't like what you do. Especially when those things come with, with bad experiences and bad consequences, they call you a bad leader. So remember the first sense, the first things have to do with not just what people don't like you do. The first, the second sense came with those things that affect your intelligence, your your health, your emotional or development, and your experience. But now people can also turn me to be a bad leader. In this, in the third sense, is that when you don't do what people like or what you have to do. Now it's not just your intelligence, that it, but it's not it's affecting the things that you do. And if you don't do what is like, people call you to be bad leaders. It is important. Okay, Ambassador has us in the second sense when people talk about bad leadership, they refer to our competence, our intelligence, and our emotional development. That's true. And you can also add your experience as well. In bless Ambassador Ambassador Blessing Hassan said, Good day, house. There is a big value to the lecture. Thank you, DG, for your good leadership. Yes, Ambassador Hassan, thank you for adding that experience and health. They are important. And these things are right in your book, folks. I'm not taking it from anywhere else. I'm taking it from the very book that I gave you. So if you're reading your book, you have, if you're reading your book, you have more contribution to making class. If you're reading your book that was issued to you, you have more contribution to making class. All right? But you see, when people don't like what you do, and what you do becomes unethical, they call you a bad leader. And it's, it's just simple. We become bad leaders when we become unethical. When we don't do what we have to do. You see, the, our ethics, are, I, will, I will say, our ethics is the formation of our values. Your value is things that you believe in. And you just don't believe in them, but you act on them. In a systematic way that will produce a positive result. Again, your value is not just what you believe in, but it's what you are acting on in a systematic way that will generate a positive result. That's value. So your emotional intelligence, your experience, their intelligence, emotional development, all come together to formulate a value. And your value 
will lead you to a course of action that will change destiny in a positive way. My question is, what are your values? What do you value the most of becoming a diplomat with the future diplomats? What in your life do you place value on? The things that you place value on that is not changed will be the very things that you want to change. Now, I'm I, I going to say this. Anything that you place is high value on. <clears throat> Are those things that you want to see happening in a productive way? Anything that you place less value on are those things that you don't care about. And even when other people do them, you don't care about them. Because you don't have value in them. One of the things that's spoiling our world today is the scamming situation. Some people don't place value on scammers. They let them go anyhow. That's why the world is turning to be a bad or has turned to be a bad place. So when the future diplomats are getting so strong or scammers, other people say, oh, let that man go and do what he's doing that his, that his way. No. We place his high value against crime. A scam is a crime. So we put a high value against crime. So anybody who try to become a scammer will be exposed in disgrace. We place a high value on the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. We place a high value on the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations. So anybody who's trying to break one of the values are breaking the intelligence, the importance, and the vision of the future diplomats. So anything you place value on becomes a formation of your life. And those things that you place value on can cause you to even sacrifice your life to cause that thing to be alive. So value is important. Okay, Ambassador, you said, sir, you can only add value to what you believe will bring a better result positively. Thank you, sir. Oh, Ambassador Abigail Lawrence, I just seen your question. When does leadership begin relative to experience? Good question. Experience. Ambassador Abigail Lawrence asks, when does leadership begin relatively to experience? Now, good leadership begins relative, relatively to experience is through learning. L-E-A-R-N-I-N-G learning. I said leaders who fail to learn are leaders who are dying. We do, we do not just learn from school in classrooms. We learn from other leaders and we learn from our followers. Your experience in leadership can begin and develop as you start learning from followers and other leaders. You gain an experience from other people's experience. You learn from other people's experience to be a better leader. I will only lead effectively if I learn from the negative experiences of others and try not to be like them. 
So their experience in their leadership that caused them to make mistakes will become my experience in my leadership that will cause me to be productive. You see, leaders make mistakes, I believe, my, in my leadership role, not because of them. They make mistakes because of me. Because if leaders make mistakes, I must learn from the mistakes to develop my experience and my steps with other leaders or my followers. We can also learn from our followers. There are some people who are following us, may not be in leadership currently, but they have greater experience and greater worth in life. You cannot be a leader to have experience. Because sometimes leadership comes through opportunities. Take note of this one. Leadership comes, sometimes leadership comes through opportunity. Opportunity. You may not be having the opportunity. Let me set an example. You may not be having the opportunity to be a leader right now in the future diplomats. But you have great experience in diplomacy. There's some of us who sit in here who are leading you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have spoken to people in the future diplomats who have great experience in diplomatic leadership than myself. So what do I need to do? I need to bring myself around those kind of people and learn from them. So that I can be productive. And then my leadership can become relevant and effective. But if I sit here and say, you know, I'm the DG. Everybody around the world is following my lead. And so I am naive or close myself to learning from my followers or some of my followers. And the leadership experience. I can now adapt a good culture of leadership experience. So their experience for 26 years in leadership can, be my, can become my experience in three months just from learning from them. So Ambassador Lawrence, I spent more time asking your question and I hope I was able to help you. When does leadership begin relatively to experience? Leadership begins relative, relatively to experience when I am not just leading, but I'm also learning from my followers. You become effective leader. Every leader must know that they are not better than their followers. Every leader must know that they may not have more experience than the followers. The only thing they must understand that they have the opportunity at this point in time to lead. So leadership may be by opportunity and not so much of experience. But it becomes effective when we learn from the experience of others. Uh, someone contributed and said, at times people call you a bad leader when they are not gaining anything from you and, and also when you refuse to when you when you what? I can't see what you said there, but something said when you. Uh, but when when you when you refuse to whatever, but invest some money, invest some money from the good. When you refuse to invest some money, well, I don't know who will call you a bad leader when you refuse to invest some money. Invest some money. I don't know if your question is. I mean, your contribution is correct. Invest some money is stealing. I, I believe when you, the opposite, I believe when you, ref, when you refuse to invest some money, then they will call you a good leader. No one should call you a bad leader when you refuse to invest some money. If people came to you and they say, let's invest, so come on, don't use the word invest, so say steal. I always say I'm a script follower man. 
when leaders steal money, they say they embezzle. When the followers take, when leaders take money, they say the leader embezzle. When the followers take money, they say the followers stole. It's unfair. So if the if the leader can embezzle, then the followers should be recognized as people who are embezzling, not stealing. If the followers are stealing, then when the leaders take money, say they stole, not embezzle. Equal opportunities. But um, Ambassador Daniel said, um, DG, inexperience is seen as in the situation happening now in, uh, in the jail. Our leaders are using threatening approach and these worsen the situation. Military action is not the best option for now, please. All right. Uh, that's correct. Uh, but I'm not going to address too much of politics. Uh, things that happen in Niger and there's military but there are a lot of politics involved. A lot of politics involved. Uh, and Ambassador uh, Daniel Jacob, you're right. Uh, sometimes military force is not the best action. At the same time, uh, people can people can be behind the scene to resolve situations diplomatically. And when the other folks think that they're not going to get involved and everybody have tried all measures to to stop situations and they're not going to do that. You have to use you have to use uh, a counter force sometimes, not every time. Right? Sometimes not every time. Uh, I, 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 I gave an example. I don't like keep coming back. I gave an example about a situation happening happen on our platform. I used diplomatic way to resolve it. And this man who in question who took money from people were using the internet and the force to speak up and say he never took money from anybody. He was not doing this. And we tried to work behind the scene to resolve this. It was not getting resolved. When I when I spoke with my when I spoke with my my team of lawyers, uh, they said to Mbada, to Mbada, if uh, just to make a clear a clerical statement, if he make his statement on the internet, you know, counteract his statement, but let your statement be stronger and powerful. And uh, some of, some of our leaders in the future diplomats, when they heard I was going to make a statement. They were hesitant and they were they were coming against uh, the statement that I wanted to make. They said, "No, DG, we should be diplomatic. We should not go that way. If the if the main question is making all those negative statements and he's lying, saying he never took people money, forget about him. Let him go his way." And I said, "No, I'm going to make this statement." And I made two powerful statements against his four or, or six statements that he was making and posting around. And his recording. The first one, the first message was to him, his followers, and to the American embassy. The second message was to implore him. I mean, the second message was to remind him to pay back the people's money who we talk. If not, just to reveal, I'm going to unveil or refill or be a counter attack. And I never told some of you who were his followers, who behave and are strutting our platform. But when I made two statements, when the individual in question heard that, he started to pay people money back. And today I want to applaud him. I want to tell you, thank you for doing the right thing. Even though some of his followers were so naive when we came back with our counter force. But it was productive. Today, somebody have gotten some of the money back. Not all, but some of the money back because we counter-reacted. We said the money must be paid. He paid the money back. And I, and I hope that this many question will continue to do the right thing. To continue paying the people money back. So some of you who are his followers, 
and some of you are still re reluctant and disrespectful today. If a man say he never took money from people, why is he paying money back? If a man say he never took money from people, why is he paying money back? So sometimes counter reaction can be the best action in a diplomatic way. Hear me, diplomacy is not always smiling and laughing. There are some drastic actions that are needed in the deep in the field of diplomacy. Right? Tell you the fun. The United, the, United, the United States and the United, everybody, the whole world were trying to talk uh, to, to talk about Bin Laden and the Akana situation. They, they never had to go look for Bin Laden anywhere. They were negotiating with him to limit the Akana situation around the world. But when Bin Laden decided to bomb the United States of America and brought down the Twin Towers, and kill hundreds of people on our own land, the United States have to counter out, have to go to look for Ben Laden. And Ben Laden was killed in the process. Is that a diplomatic approach? Yes. Killing is wrong. But if they wouldn't have counter reacted and get Ben Laden off the scene, the whole world will be in the most troublesome situation today. Because once Ben Laden had bombed the United States of America, it gave him joy, and his followers were happy they were going to start bombing other countries. So the United States took another diplomatic approach, and that diplomatic approach was to get rid of Ben Laden. So everything in diplomacy is not just laughing. You can work behind the scene to get things resolved. But if someone who is secretly hard-hearted, we talk about intelligence, and the intelligence is not up to a standard, and the thing that commotion, confusion, is the problem, sometimes that should be your means of counter-reaction. But your counter-reaction must be in a profound and in a profound decency and diplomatic way. Right? If I wouldn't have made my the two speech that I made, two speeches, the two speeches online that I made, people who get in the money back today wouldn't have gotten the money back. And I want to say to this effect as I start to run up this class. The future diplomat has not ended there. They're going to go as far as possible as we can to get rid of things that are happening around the world. I may not be in India. I may not be in Nigeria. I may not be in Cuba. I may not be in Liberia. I may not be in Senegal. I may not be in Sierra Leone. But we have to write based upon our international minute to make a world a better place. Everyone will not like us. Everyone will not like our, the decisions we make. Everybody will not want to be like us. It doesn't matter. As long as we are doing what is right and bringing justice to the world, we don't care who will like us or don't like us. We really don't. What we care about, that justice is being served. And, and the underprivileged are brought back up at the level. We all are equally equal before God. We all are empowered and endowed with the same spirit. So nobody can use the power, the intelligence, to ridicule, to bring other people down, to steal from them, to scam them. And nobody around the world can threaten the future diplomats. We are well 
established. We have the foundation that will last for our for lifetime. So don't think that you're becoming a member of the future department because you're doing us a favor. No, you must come to us in the ethical and professional way. Come to us with understanding and delightness, and you want to make a world a better place. And anybody who thinks that they can organize and lead their own organization, the future diplomat is here to give you the support. But because we have values and culture, policies and procedures, we can never have people come in the future diplomat team that they are running two or three organizations in our organization. It's not possible. We have one future diplomat. Like how we have one United Nations, but different branches around the world. United Nations is operating in almost every country of the world with a headquarters here in the United States of America. And that's the same operational authority that the future diplomat has. Every organization around the world that is called the Future Diplomats Cooperation operates on a one form of leadership from one headquarters, our headquarters in New York, and our administrative headquarters here in California. We don't have three, diplom three future diplomats in Future Diplomat Cooperation. That shows that every leader who comes in our organization must come to be respectful, must come to follow our rules, policies, and procedures, and adapt to change if they don't have a change in the leadership structure and ability. That's a bad leadership we are talking about. Leaders who will see other leaders are doing bad and call it good. Leaders who will hear other leaders do something negative and say, let's just leave that person. That's how they want to live. Then you are a bad apple or a bad leader as well. Again, the future diplomats are not just recruiting people. We want to recruit people who are ethical, people who can represent our organization. So let me say this to you. If you, are rec if you are representing the future diplomats, you are in our interest and in the interest of the people of your country. So let's understand this. Someone contributed. Donna Joe, asking a question. Please, DJ, how will someone has the leadership experiences with all being given the opportunity to lead? Good question. Everyone is a leader. Daniel Joseph, so everyone has the everyone is a lead, everyone is leading in the leading. Do you have do you have children at home? You are a leader. Uh, are you married and have a family as a man? You are a leader. You lead in your home. You, you're gaining leadership experience. Because if you cannot lead and manage your home, you cannot lead and manage anyone else effectively. Are you a student going to school and you have people in your classrooms that are following you? You are a leader. I believe everyone having leadership ability to lead and everyone having the opportunity, but they are not recognizing the opportunity that they have. It's one thing to have the opportunity, it's another thing to recognize the opportunity that has been given. So be mindful of the leadership ability and the opportunity. You see, leadership does not bring you on a big international platform. Because you see, the position does not make the leader. The leader makes the position. So leadership experience is also given to you, uh, I believe, Ambassador Daniel Joe, wherever you are. 
Are you in a church and you're leading the choir? You are a leader. Are you a Sunday school leader in your church? You are a leader. You may not be a leader on an international platform like the future diplomats, but you are leading in a small capacity. Now, when you start to lead in a small capacity and you develop your character, your experience, and your leadership ability, then those things open door for a larger skill of coming into leadership. Right? Uh, hear me. Hear me. That's why when a child is born in the royal family, they know that child is the next king. He does not have the experience to lead yet. They are not giving him the opportunity to lead. Right? But what they, what, what they do for him, they de or her, they develop that child into the leadership capacity and they give them smaller roles to lead until the king or the queen is dead and then the next person in charge takes over. So you don't have to be in a formal position to be a leader. Hear me this one, someone. You don't have to be in a formal position to be a leader. Every little opportunity you have to lead makes you a leader. And your capacity, your intelligence, your moral development, open doors for a larger skill on leadership ability. That's what the future diplomat is giving every one of you an opportunity here to be a leader. Once you become an ambassador with us, you should be a leader that is leading the world because the world is looking at future diplomats. The world is looking for change. The world is, is, is looking for an opportunity that they never seen or have received before. And we believe the future diplomat is that opportunity to the world, creating the world to be a smooth, a better place where justice is served and everyone has equal opportunity. Uh, somebody said, Ambassador Grace Time. Folks, I'll soon be closing. I'm going to close in, uh, in five minutes. Uh, so ask all your questions. I'm going to be closing in five minutes. Uh, it's 11.37 right now. Uh, so I'm going to be closing. Actually, I wanted to close by 11.30, as I said, but all these, all these good questions started coming at the end of the lecture. Start asking your questions initially, initially folks, so we can close. Uh, someone said, Leaders get into trouble when they put the desire for results before their willingness to develop themselves in the areas of competence and character. Woo! Woo! My man, that is great, Kondabisho. Ambassador, uh, uh, uniform, it's great. Yes, leaders get in trouble when they first present the put that is when the desire for results. You know, before their willingness to develop themselves. But good thing is, before their willingness to even develop all of us. Because here's the thing. Don't just develop yourself, but learn to develop all of us. Because you see, good leaders will, will multiply himself in others so others can help him fulfill his dream and his vision. So you see, a good leader should not just be concerned about developing himself. Good contribution by just adding this. Good leaders must be able to develop all of us. It should be the key priority. How can I develop all of us? So that they, so they can be a multiplication of myself. And that's always been my leadership role. I mean, my leadership desire. How can I, Ernest Gibson, develop all of us and bring them into leadership so they can be great? Uh, Ambassador Lawrence said, discipline and humanity align you with the ethics and practice of set of of a set of, of a setting to have informed results. That's correct. That's correct. Two things, Ambassador Abigail Lawrence, discipline and humanity. I don't have time to talk about about that now. Uh, but a leader who is not disciplined 
will lose track of his followers. A leader who is not disciplined is not disciplined, cannot discipline others as well. A leader who cannot recognize in himself that he, that he needs to be checkmated or disciplined in certain characters cannot be an effective and efficient leader. And a leader who cannot humble himself, humble himself. You see, that's one of the things that happens. Soon leadership starts to get into, the, into our head. Soon they give us the title. They will walk us out of humanity. We become so proud and so big. You know, uh, our, listen to me. There will be nothing, nothing to come into my head to lead me to be so big. I don't care how big the future diploma is. 4,000 people on about 49, 50 countries, nations of the world that are now going to fool my head and don't humble myself. I don't care what all the title you can give me, DG. I sat with presidents. I got reward from presidents. I shook hands with kings. I sat with war leaders. And I'm leading the future diplomat around the world. But there is nothing that will make me too proud not to humble myself. Humility is the key to future greatness. I want to say this to you, somebody. Humanity is the key to future greatness. In fact, a good book that some of you know said, God resists the proud, but give grace to the humble. I'm sorry for bringing that in my lecture today because I know we have not just all Christians here, we have Buddhists and you know uh, Muslims. But if you humble yourself in the presence of your creator, he lifts you up. Humanity, do not allow any position, country director. Oh my God, state coordinator, PRO, DG, organizing secretary, fill your, your head, your heart, and you become so proud, and you start to control the very people who you're supposed to be leading. Nobody can talk to you. You, do, you cannot make, have no one make a decision. Everybody must come to you for everything. You are making a mistake. Do not allow your position that gave it to you to make you walk in proud. Because when you fall, it will be the very people who you lead and you're going to fall back on. You see, leadership is like a ladder that you claim. And if a ladder is not stable, it's not firm, you're going to fall back. And the very people who you left down will be the very people you're going to fall back on. And they should be the very people that should catch you up, not for hurting your back on the floor. But if you are hurt them, they'll be the very people who want to see you falling, they will get off the way. And your fall will be a great fall. So do not allow your leadership capacity or your leadership, not capacity, but your leadership will to fill your head. Uh, no leader is, no leader is, it's perfectly good or bad, Ambassador Tato said. A leader can be bad in character, but good in competence. Hear me. If you are bad in character and you're trying to be good in competence, you are bad. You see, competence is not what you can do. It's not to accomplish your goal. If you're bad in character, what makes you good in competence? Com your competence is what you're able to do. It's your knowledge, it's your experience. But people do not care about your knowledge and your experience, Ambassador Titus, if you have a bad character. People really don't care what you can say, competence. You see, there are some leaders who are good, Oracle, the good in speaking, but the bad in character. You are a bad leader. Ambassador Titus, you can never be a good leader in competence and bad in character and be considered good. There's no way. You see, people does not care now. Oh, sorry. People don't care now. People really don't care now what you say, competence, that you can do. People look for character. That's why I have some bad actors on our platform. They were good speakers. They were good 
orators. They could lead people just by talking. But the character was bad in scamming other people. You can never be good in speaking when you have a bad character. So don't get it wrong, Ambassador Tata. That's a good contribution. But no, no, no. If a character is bad and you think your, your competency is good, what is competency? It's what you think you can handle. How can you how can you handle something when you have a bad character? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. <laughs> DG does it mean using counter reaction to diplomacy issue is the last result to get result or keeping peace with the yes. Uh using counter reaction. Uh, should be the last result. If you are trapped by all means, Ambassador bless, uh, Blessing Benson, if you are trapped by all means to resolve a situation and it cannot be resolved, counter reaction sometimes in a diplomatic way will give you the best result. Right? The world came together to end World War II in a diplomatic way, by uniting and sending a great message to Hitler and his team that they're coming to counter react because Hitler was, was going around causing war, killing people and taking smaller countries, seizing their liberty. The war came together after they tried to diplomatically resolve what was happening, Hitler refused. And so the war came together and said, we, we must declare war on Hitler. Say he's killing other people, we must come to him and get rid of him. It was the res last result, but it, it gave something. Hitler had to flee, the war, had, the war experienced peace again, right? So sometimes counter-reaction in the diplomatic faction is okay, but it should be the, re the last result. Not the first, not the second, not the middle, but the last. Well, you know you have exhausted all your diplomatic means and ethics, and everybody else has gotten involved, and nothing can happen. Excuse me, counter reaction is sometimes uh, reproductive. So, yes, uh, Ambassador Tata says there are kings, and there is a king of kings. Leaders are different. I don't know if you talk, if you know, we talk about that, Ambassador. I know they're having kings when you say they're kings of kings. The king of kings is only Jesus, and I don't want to go into political and religious stare right now, but if you go back to the good old book that you read, uh, Jesus was also recognized as a political leader. Oh, I'm not going to go into that because that's a deep thing I can talk about right now. Jesus was also realized as a political leader, even though he was a king of kings. And uh, so we should not get into church politics right now <laughs> because, the, because the greatest politics you can find right now is in the church. It's not even in the world. It's not even among government. The greatest politics you find right now, you find politics in the church, right? So let's let's let's. I know there are king and there are kings of kings. So the king of kings is Jesus Christ, right? I don't know any king of kings anywhere in the world besides Jesus Christ. So you may be having your king in your country, but the king of kings that I know is Jesus Christ. Then I do, man. Did you thank you for doing justice to my question? I appreciate your your the kind of intelligence ability thank you uh ambassador ambassador dana joe i'm tell you i'm tell you this is humanity every time i gave an answer even if it's not in your interest or why you desire you always acknowledge that the answer satisfy your curiosity ambassador daniel joe this is humanity and i appreciate you for that i appreciate you always recognizing you humbling yourself even if the answer is not in your favor, you've never been negative. And that's a good dealership ability. It tells me that you are learning and you are growing and you're going to be one of the greatest leaders that your country will experience. I can tell you that. I can tell from, I can tell from people when they are maturing into the leadership ability. And Ambassador Daniel, I don't know more about you, but your, your approach here tells me that you are growing your leadership ability. And I wish you well. Yes, Ambassador Gloria, Ambassador Gloria Johnson said, you can only give what you have. That's true. Leaders can only offer what they have. That's why your intelligence, your, your leadership making is important. And that's why we're trying to abrust you here. Good to be here. We're close now. You say good to be here. Thank you for being here. 
Leadership Ambassador Abigail Lawrence. You see, you can, you can be complaining about the time. I've said we are close and you keep giving good, asking good questions and contribution. And some of you say, oh, it's, some of you say it's getting, the class is too long. And some of you enjoying it because you want to spend your hours, but we got to realize the other people who are spending most of the time you have to cut the class short. Well, Abigail Lawrence said, leadership is in night, in all, in all, and nurtured in the social environment from diverse, from diverse dimensions. And she wanted to say, what you know makes you and, and takes you to where you should be. Woo! That's fabulous. That's so true in Barcelona. What you know will make you and take you what you ought to be. But yes, the thing. Yes, the thing, Ambassador Lawrence. I always talk about character. What you know can make you and it can take you to where you ought to be. But when you get to where you want, where you need to be, your character will keep you there. So your intelligence is what you know. Your competence is what you know. It can take you there and you can get there. But your character is what will keep you there. How will you interact, interrelationship with other people? How will you speak to them? What will you do? How will you greet them? So the hair mark of anything we do is character. It's like a man who's going on a trip. He packs his bag, his suitcase. He goes on a trip. His suitcase has gone with him. When he opens his bag, the last thing he pack will be the first thing that, will, that he will take up. Remember, when you're traveling, the last thing you pack will be the first thing you will uncover when you get to a new place. So your character sometimes can be the last thing you try to cover. But when you get there, Ambassador Lawrence, your character will be the first thing that will display. So character is important. Let me leave this thing, folks. Thank you so much, DG. More grace to your leadership powers. Thank you so much. Because of you, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm here. Uh, uh, someone talking about marriage. Oh, this is you don't you don't give what you don't have. The marriage fades. Ambassador Abigail Lawrence. Uh, thank you, DG, for today's lecture on, on leadership in, in which you are on. That always leads by example and shows you are uh, competent. Very interesting, educative. Okay, more wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and power, DG. God bless you. Uh, Ambassador, Ambassador David uh, says, I agree, the greatest politics is in religion, no doubt. <laughs> Where are you coming from, Ambassador D Diana? You've been sleeping. He's our Ambassador Diana is our international uh, director for mobilization and recruitment. He says, "I agree. The greatest politics is in religion, no doubt about that. Even many won't accept that, but it is a hundred percent true fact." Thank you, Ambassador. Yeah, like, even Jesus' days, the greatest politics. The greatest politics was in Jesus, you know, his, his cycle, his, his apostles, you know. Uh, 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 I don't want to jump into this, but do you know that, that that's what Jesus had? What we call today, uh, we don't know, but most of us don't know. He has 72, he had 500 disciples. Oh, yeah, Jesus had 500, 500 followers, 500 disciples. Other than 500 disciples, there were a lot of politics among them. 500 disciples. That you may not know right in the scripture. I'm not teaching Bible right now, but politics and religion. Jesus had five hundred disciples. Out of the five hundred disciples, he sent seventy-two out as missionaries. How many of you know that? When they went out, they came back and brought a testimony that they saw Satan falling down from the tree in the lightning. And Jesus said, "Don't rejoice that Satan fell, but rejoice because your names are written in the in the Lamb's book of life." Uh, so Jesus had five hundred disciples. He sent seventy-two out as missionaries. Out of the seventy-two, he have 12, 
12 of them, what we, what we call, today what we call disciples, but they were called the apostles. <laughs> right. There were 12 that we call the apostles, but they wouldn't know the 12 to be um, the, the, his disciples. No, he had five hundred disciples. 72 of them were missionaries. Uh, 12 of them was what we call his apostles. And three of them were what he called the inner cycle. Learn Jesus' ministry now. 500 disciples, 72 were missionaries, 12 was apostles, and 3 were in the cycle. And Jesus will come to the inner cycle because of too much politics. He will tell them, what I tell you, what I tell you, do not let nobody hear, not even the other disciples, until the fulfillment of the time has come. Right? So Jesus had a secret so today, when I call some people, now I'm not Jesus, but when you have a leadership and you have you have just certain people knowing certain things, everybody get angry. Why my name is not there? Why my signature, maybe my signature is not there? Why this is not there? No. Okay, let's forget about politics and, and Jesus. Let's come back to it. Let's close this section because I can give you a lot of things, folks, from the Bible. Everything we do into this world today, the austere guy from the book. That's why most of my books, you see, on leadership, on, on, on management, I call it church management. This management is for, for management for a runaway. Now you see, most of my books I wrote, I wrote it from the Bible perspective because we're having a lot of good biblical Christians. This was a single core principles of organizational management. Uh, a P a POM, Principles of Organizational Management, but I just call it from a biblical perspective. I use the biblical view. Anything you want to do on the face of this earth, true folks, come from the Bible. Thank you so much. I'm grateful uh, for you all. And I want to say thank you. I'll be talking to you soon. This class has come to an end. Study your book. Remember, after next week, after next week's class, I will open up now the test. After next week, anybody who feel that they have learned enough for this uh, for this time and they are ready to open it, they're ready to take their final exam, just let me know. I will send you the link to the test. You will have to take the test online. Once you pass the test, I will get the result that you pass the test and we will issue you your credentials, your membership ID card. So after next week, I'm going to announce that the time for the test is open. You can take your test. But hear me, every question on your test question comes from the textbook that you have. Not these books that I've written that you're asking for, they all come from the textbooks. So, be, so read your book sufficiently. It may be out of 50, 50 questions, 75 questions, or 100 questions. All depends on the look of the, of the questions. So steady, steady. Saturday will be one of our last sections. And then we will, uh, we will um, come back. Now, uh, today, I'm going to end this section. Today is the hang up with the DG. I know I sent the link. Uh, but if you still want to have additional 10 minutes with me, I'm going to hang up. Just inbox me. If you want to hang up the time with the DG, I can give you that opportunity. Today, Saturday, I've committed myself to you. Uh, I know that there are new people here who have questions to ask. And so we'll call that Saturday, the time with the DG. If you want to have a time with a DG, you want to have additional time with me, uh, what we can do is that we can do a special section for, for you for that. But for the class section, this session is over. And if you want to have a special time with me, inbox me. I will send you the link. And then we can do a YouTube, I'm mean, sorry, not YouTube video, but we can do uh, a Zoom call a Zoom group conference call where we can you can see me, I can see you, and we can we can interact and you can ask your question. But thank you so much. 
uh, may God bless you. God bless every nation that is part of Future Diploma, and may God bless the Future Diploma. Thank you. I will be talking to you again. Remember that uh, we are Future Diplomas, and we are making the world a better place.